who will stand against the king? No one can. No one will. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him.
We know there's no other name that we can call upon this name by the name of Jesus. Lord, even in death, Father God, in life, you remain King, Father God Almighty, of Lord of all. You say even in your word, Father God Almighty, that of the increase of your government and your peace, there will be no end, Father God Almighty. And today, Lord God Almighty, we can today stand upon your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our parts, O Lord God Almighty. Your word says, Father God, that blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted, Father God Almighty. We know, Father God, that your word spoke in the beginning, O Lord. And even today, Father, we can still see the effect of it, Lord God Almighty. And today, Father, we pray for the Margaret and extended families, Lord. Even in this time, Father God Almighty, that you will give unto them the strength needed, Father God Almighty. That your Holy Spirit will comfort them at this time, O Lord God Almighty, with your word. With just, Lord, those around them, O Father. Lord, in their time of weakness, give them strength. For your word says, when I'm weak, you are strong, Father God Almighty. Your grace and your grace is sufficient for us, O Lord God Almighty. And today, Father God, we just want to stand upon your word and trust upon you that you will lead us, Father God, in everything that needs to be done this day, in every place we need to go to, Father God, and everything that needs to be said, Father God, that it will be through your spirit of truth, Father God Almighty, in Jesus' name, Lord. You are our source, you are our strength, and you are our refuge, Father God Almighty. We give unto you, even in this time, Father, all glory and honor for the life of Grandfather God Almighty. Thank you for the impact that he has made, Father God Almighty, those, Father God Almighty. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing that you ask, Father God Almighty. We just honor you in this, Lord God Almighty. Give, Father God, and send you under family and the brothers and sisters and the children, Father God, special strength this day, Lord. We ask it, Lord God Almighty, in Jesus' name. Amen. On behalf of Victory Tabernacle, uh, Pastor Wayne, uh, we just want to, in the leadership and the congregation, in his absence, he wanted to be here, but obviously work called to him, called him, and so he couldn't. And we just want to uh, express our sincere condolences unto the family that's lost. You know, uh, this time, as Vetti said earlier, that it's all your years, condolences, condolences, wherever we go. You know, and uh, in January, leave, uh, you lost a, son, uh, a brother, a son. Amen. And now again, so uh, you haven't even had time to, to gain strength. And now it hits you again. But I believe that the word will give you strength. I want to remind you of the word in, in, in Second Samuel, I think it's 15, where David, David had a son. It was with Bathsheba. And the, the Nathan, the prophet, came to me and said, hey, You've done this wrong thing. But here Daniel had the son, and the son got sick. And it says at the time of the time of the child was sick, that Daniel, uh, Daniel, uh, David, sorry, David, you know, he prayed, he fasted, he laid before the Lord, you know, trusting the Lord. And at the seventh day, the child died. Even in that, even in his cry out unto the Lord, the child died. And he says that when he had noticed that his servants that were around him, you know, their, their reaction showed that something is wrong. So he came to them and he, he, said, he asked them, has my son died? They said, even as a king, they were afraid to tell him. And they said, yes, king. And at that time, it see Daniel, I keep on saying Daniel, David stood up. And he said that he washed, his, he washed himself. And he put lotion on his face, lotions. When you speak about the lotion on your face in the Old Testament, it speaks about it's an end of something. 
and he stood up at that time after the death and he got himself ready and he ate after not eating for seven days. And then when they asked him, they said, oh, how was this king, David? When the child was alive, you were, you mourn. But now he's, he's, he's gone. You know, how, how come? He said to them, well, I cannot, he, I, I, I cannot go, he can't come to me anymore, but I can still go to him. He says, when he was alive, I, I, I trusted God because I know that God can do something and can God will still be gracious to me that he can do something and raise up and heal the boy. But it was God's choice, you know, in that particular point in the story. But, you know, when he stood up and he said that words, we can just come and we can speak about Daniel knew the faithfulness of God. He knew how God trusted, how he, how he trusted upon God. Uh, David, and because he, when Saul wanted to kill him, God was there for him. When he was with the, when he was with the Philistines, they wanted to kill him. God carried him through. When he had battles, God was he, he knew the faithfulness. You can read his Psalms. You know, you can read his Psalms. His Psalms says, "The Lord is my shepherd." That means in all his trials and tribulations that he has faced, you can still call upon God and say, "God is my shepherd." And today, even in your loss, it is important that we can trust upon the Lord. It's important that we can trust upon His Word, because His Word is the one that will carry us through. Amen. His Word will carry us through. I'm always reminded, I always want to say this, that uh, Peter denied Christ. We know that Peter denied Christ. And at that particular point in time, when he denied Christ the third time, the word says, he remembered the words of the Lord. So today I encourage you to remember the words of the Lord. Everything that will be said to you today, uh, the Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance. The Lord will say, blessed are those that mourn for you. You will be comforted. In it. And today I want to encourage you to stand strong within the Lord. Uh, he's the only one that will carry it. And obviously the people around you, he uses people. So those that come and give a heart, those that come and, and just give a word of encouragement, those that just come and say, uh, Sandra, Allah sarehvies. Amen. We need to trust upon the word of the Lord. Amen. I'm just going to ask if we can just sing one song. I'm going to ask Elmi just to lead us there, maybe with a song um, we can, before we continue with the tributes. straight into the tributes. Uh, I'm going to call up Tyrese Peters and Latanya Lums just to come forward.
morning, family and friends. Lush. Never did we ever imagine that just five months apart, we as a family would be facing the kind of grief, sorrow and agonizing pain that we're feeling right now. With a heart torn apart and at a loss for words, I want to pay tribute to our gentle giant, our pillar, a father, an uncle, and a brother, second to none. Your humility, your caring heart, and their free giving spirit are the exact attributes that I am taking with me on my life's journey. I'm going to miss the days where we, where we could, on the spur of the moment, quickly organize a get-together, and you would always have these doors open, wide open for us, our family home. Those moments we will cherish for the rest of our lives. The Bible says, in everything, give thanks. And I am indeed full of thanksgiving for the privilege of having had you in my life. Death may have taken you away from us, but you always remain alive in our hearts. Sleep, my uncle, for it is only for a little while. It's just a short script from a biblical song to draw comfort from. Friends of our God, through they may pass away, will never be forsaken. All those who sleep, who in God's memories stray, from death we will awaken. Then we'll come to see all that life can be, paradise eternally. As we look back over time, we find ourselves wondering, did we remember to thank you enough for all you have done for us, for all the times you were by our side to help and support us, to celebrate our successes, to understand our problems, and to accept our defeats, or for teaching us by your example the value of hard work, good judgment, courage, and integrity. We wonder if we ever thanked you for the sacrifices you made to let us have the very best, and for the simple things like laughter, smiles, and times we shared. If we have forgotten to show our gratitude enough for all the things you did, we're thanking you now, and we are hoping you knew it all along, how much you mean to us. May your soul rest in eternal peace, we love you so much, Uncle. Amen. Thank you, Daddy Slitania. Call up next, Samantha Arms. I had met each other in a time in our lives when we were both going through a tough time. From the first day we met, it was such a high, happy feeling. I felt like he had saved my heart, and I'd like to think I had done the same for him. He was kind, caring, and protective. Our life was so full of love, life, and joy. Grant was an easygoing guy, and the simplest things in life gave him the greatest pleasure. He loved long Sunday drives, and he loved dancing, my favorite jazz partner. In the time we were together, we had spent practically day and night together for the last two years, with us both working from home. We enjoyed each other's company so much. We spoke politics, comedy.
on you guys. I enjoyed listening to every part of his stories and I took everything in. Sometimes we spoke so much we would forget to fetch the kids from school. Sorry, he asked inside on his knees. We struggled with the usual lockdown fatigue and of course we had our down days. But Grant was always the one who tried to lift the mood and get us all in the house, get us all some stones, take us all outside and we would play cards and dominoes when it was hard kids from together. You'd always find him playing in the pool with the kids Marco Polo. With the kids Marco Polo. Grant loved family Grant gatherings, loved and, family get gatherings and get together with our friends. He was always the DJ and he always knew what to play for everyone because he was just that attentive. Always making sure everyone was okay. For those who know me, well, now I'm a proper stressed Eric, and Grant was always so calm, always grounded and centered me. One day at a time, baby so would always say, and was just who he was, always putting everyone before himself. For those who know him will agree that he was such a pleasant person. Except when he would play too much PlayStation. He sure did love his PlayStation, which would occasionally drive me nuts. But I realize now that that was his outlet, as he always took on so much and he always kept everything together for everyone. He was the glue of our family. family. He glued to his glue own to family. His family. Forget that he has left, Forget his just that he has left his just memory. He was a present partner, he a, was present a present dad, partner, son, a present dad brother, son, uncle, son and brother, friend. uncle, and friend. He always entered his calls to his family members with I love you. That's always my nice style at the type of person he was. He was an amazing father to my children and to his daughter Shaylee. He was such a blessing to them. He loved Shaylee so much. He was always so fascinated by the way he was. He always made a conscious effort to know her, to know what was going on in her life. He wanted to know her friends. What her favorite things were, and he did no less for my kids. Grant loved his family and his friends so much. When I think about it, he was so blessed. He had such a full life with so many people that he loved so much. I tried to take comfort in that. He was never afraid to apologize when he was wrong, and he really tried his best in every aspect of his life. Loving him was so easy. The last two weeks have been excruciating. From being what someone practically every single night and day to being alone. I honestly don't even know the way forward without him, but God knows best. Even though the end, I feel I pushed aside how sick he was to take care of me. Constantly pushing me to get better. But if it were not for him, I don't even think I would have made it. That was my God. My heart is completely shattered and I am broken without him. As I know, are so many others who love me. Grant, you were the most amazing person I would ever meet in my life. The only reasonable explanation for your early departure is that you were just too good for this earth. So God called you home to be with you. This easy, I change which I love you always. Please would just like to say something short and sweet. I have an angel watching over me and I put in daddy. And then just give me a They just got each other Amen. 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 Amen.
can't. As I'm still shocked. I spent most of the last we came in the city. About the last four decades, we've been friends. The memories and laughs are way too many to put down on paper. But there have been too many seminal moments that defined our friendship over the years. And I hope to be able to pay tribute to you, Lush, Fino, as you are known to us, your friends. Growing up together in Hoslam Street, we played in the street from early in the morning to late in the afternoon. We played all sorts of games from hand tennis street soccer, cricket in your backyard, where your dad's yellow bus was our wicket keeper, to racing on foot and bicycling around the block. It was evident from a very young age you had natural sporting abilities. I was incredibly proud to be your friend, the high school 100 meter and 200 meter sprint record holder. Thank you and thank you to your family for always welcoming us, your friends, to your house be it to watch karate movies on the Sunday afternoon or just hanging around before we took to the streets of Reicha Park. The hours we friends play, spend playing arcade games by the shops, Ginny will recall Remy and Bob in the video store, and you becoming the grandmaster in Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, and so many other games. These memories will forever be etched in my mind. Our friendship journey continued and you continue to excel in sport. I always remain in awe of your passion, commitment, drive to see things through. Like the idea from playing street cricket has evolved into creating Rainbow Park's first cricket club. You work tirelessly and with teachers like Mr. Richards, Mr. Gaylor, Vernie, to set the club up, run it, and play as its first team captain. I vividly recall you leading us from the front, season in and season out, getting up early every weekend, driving around to collect players and making personal financial sacrifices just for the love of the game of cricket. Grant, thank you for all you hold, for always holding me to account, lending an ear, a shoulder to lean on, while carefully listening to the problems I brought you. You were always open and honest with your feedback, your words, Equario, Mania Edi, we pride no nonsense, and yes, on it or Thank you for being a pillar of strength and support to us as friends over many years, from being my best man to trekking along with me on marathons to rough it out in tough conditions. The memories mentioned are just a few, and we could talk for hours about those days. Your love for your family and friends was immeasurable, so much so that this home became a haven to these friends and family. Auntie Sandra and family, thank you for raising a man of strong morals, deep convictions, and a gentle spirit. He was a man amongst men. Sam, thank you for making me happy. Shay, your dad was my role model. And often we spoke about his love for you and him only wanting the best for you. For well, Lush, brother, you will be missed, but you will not be forgotten. As we sit here as friends, we were always speaking about how we could write a book about our life's adventures, but I thought a short poem will encompass it all. Grant, we are here to celebrate your life and to measure and the measure of its worth in every single life you touched while you were on this earth. We wish to pay you our last respects. That's why we are all here. Thank you for your friendship and all the memories we hold dear. It's been a privilege to have known you. We were family, not just friends, and we will carry you in spirit until we meet up once again. Firstly, I'd like to say to the mother and family, please accept our sincerest condolences. On the passing of your son, brother, father, and our dear friend. Since Grant passed away, <coughs> there's been a lot going on in my mind. Playing over memories, times we spent together, the moments we shared. 
I found myself crying, but also laughing because of the fun that we had together, the times we spent. Throughout all of this, the one element that's come through about Grant's character, and that I want to speak to today, is his gentle kindness, his warmth, always calm, always present. I have many, many, many stories to share of my time with Grant. We spent time talking life, laughing. He accepted all my stupidity, always laughed, always had fun together. I always loved to tease him and bother him, and he was always up for a joke. A few that I can highlight just to, to shed some, to give more context to who he was, to me and to our friends and family. One night we sat, um, I think it was at Versha's house, <laughs> And I think it was a bit of drunk for three on my side, but I was quite sad at that time. And I started crying. And he sat next to me because it was just the two of us. And he looked at me. And any other person would probably have approached it differently. But Grant just said to me, Buta, I said, yeah, I'm okay, okay. <laughs> and he started crying more than me. He outcried me. <laughs> We hugged each other that night, and I said to him afterwards, always, who came from my client? Like, hey, Kyle, yes, no, but you take it. <laughs> On another occasion, we were out one night, and I said to him, Grant, what can can you do, so? If we end up in a fight. He laughed, and he said to me, you can the best to be all the rate of art, because I can art club, I can be able to help. <laughs> He was always ready, always giving 100% to his friends and family, and always consistent and loving. I can go into a lot more, but I want to close off with this piece. Two weeks ago, when he was admitted to hospital, I sent him a message and I said to him, with me in Armaki, better seem like in hospital. And his reply to me was, my innings is a and the significance of the statement at the time didn't, didn't resonate with me. But it was a reference to the days when we were playing cricket. And as always, I was joking, nothing serious. And the game wasn't finished yet. And he'd always scream, the game was not reclining. The game was not reclining. Focus. Later. Granted, your game in life might have been finished. But trust me, your game is equal. Your memory is going to live with us forever. And the impact that you had on my life, on our friends' lives, on your family's life. And you've left a big, big, big gap in my heart. We love you, my brother. Thank you. Amen. What a beautiful trip with other friends. Amen. It's, when a friend says you've got character, then you must know it's God says he created that his image, his likeness. That means there's character bound within it that we have. And if they know you to call you anytime and they know to be the same and any time they can they they get that lesson, you know, then it's really truly friends that can speak about it, amen. And God to you strength, amen. Even yourself strength at this time, amen. Uh, we're gonna go through tribute by BCX. Uh, Roger Suku. Family members and friends. Sorrow fills our heart, the sad moment. A sorrow that is deep and personal. Grant has silently closed the door of life and departed from us. Our lives will be empty in the areas that he had brightened for us. 
Albert Einstein said, the value of a man should be seen in what he gives and not what he is able to receive. In one word, Grant was a man who gave. He gave much to his work with dedication and commitment. I'd like to speak in celebration of his life. Here was a life that demanded exceptional character, a life that exemplified brilliance, a life that inspired emulation, a life that exemplified commitment and dedication so that other, others' parts were lit. I have known Grant since 2014 when he joined the division as a senior systems engineer. Grant was a strategic thinker, a visionary who was brilliant, innovative and creative. As such, he contributed much to the development of the organization and team. He generously gave us his knowledge, his expertise, and his skills. Grant was deeply concerned by improving, developing, and he was very keen to lead his team. He initiated and implemented much in this field during the years that he was in the team. Grant was living proof of how fine a person can be. He was a good team leader to the people in his charge, a loving, dedicated father to his daughter, and dedicated to his family. He was also a good friend to many of us and a great colleague. The character of the life he lived might be summed up in a few words. He was sincere, he was earnest, and he was loyal. As senior systems engineer, Grant led his team in such a way that he exemplified leadership. He gave energy, commitment, and inspiration to his team and to others whom he worked. The Grant I remember was a happy Grant, one who not only was cherished in himself, but who gave much cheerfulness to others. He had a beautiful smile, a sense of humor, a gentle giant demeanor. Grant was bright, logical, and systematic in his thinking was always willing to share his ideas and information. He was passionately interested in all matters and would advise us on numerous internal and customer-related issues. Many of us found him to be a splendid person of great intellect and big heart. In his career, he worked with passion, integrity, and energy. By his death, all the people who knew him will miss him. The highly intelligent, vibrant individual with the rare friendliness and charm of a personality. Grant was generally warm and a wonderful individual, one we miss greatly. Our sorrow is lessened only slightly with the comforting thought that we had the privilege to know him. Life is but a stopping place, a pause in what's to be, a resting place along the road to sweet eternity. We all have different journeys different parts along the way. We all were meant to learn some things, but never mean to stay.
Our destination is a place, a far greater than we know. For some journeys quicker, some journeys slow. And when the journey finally ends, we'll make a great step forward and find an everlasting peace as our special reward. May your soul rest in eternal peace, Grant. Go well, friend and colleague. We are definitely going to miss you dearly. Amen. Common in what he says about the friends as well, about his character and his way that he is. Amen. Uh, I will always see him always quiet when, when, I, when I meet up with him or pass him by or something. And I said, hey, just still my beliefs. Amen. But deep inside, bold character and the uh, influence that will last and ensure the life for all of us and those that knew him well here. Amen. We're going to have a song I tomorrow by Elmer. Uh, by Elmer. Amen, colleagues. Amen.
Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, we're going to go into the Word now. We'll do that eventually and the vote of thanks after that. So I'm going to call up Pastor Vern, uh, who's going to minister the Word today. Amen, Pastor. Amen. My reading is in John chapter 4. John chapter 14, sorry. Let us pray. Baruch Hashem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Father, touch my heart. Speak to me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Before I go to the word, it's... I recognize an African said, it hurt the word. I said, I'm also part. And as you know, that it hurt was a dog's honey. And I said, I'm not going to be able to do it. I've lost family members also in this year, and it was being said. But Psalm 121 says, I look to the hills where comes my help from. My help comes from the maker of heaven and earth. Amen. John chapter 14. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they have left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so it was already falling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind eased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be? Jesus was in the boat asleep. And the disciples were sitting with him. But then suddenly, suddenly, the wind arose. And I titled my message, The Unexpected Storm. The unperverted storm that opened it. And Jesus questioned these guys when they are fearful, knowing that something is going to happen in the boat, knowing that their time is coming to an end because the boat can capsize any given time. So they run down the storm, which is at the bottom of the boat, and wake him up to say, Father, don't you realize that we are perishing? What are you going to do? But then he throws it back to them and he questions them, don't you have faith? You see, this incident today, what has happened here, was the unexpected storm in the Margaret family. No one knew it's going to happen. There was a word for that. And today the world is sitting 
what the unexpected storm. None of us know what tomorrow morning holds. We hear, I want you to for now, because that dinosaur is worthy, that dinosaur is dying. It's just death all the time. I've asked questions. I said, you know, when a hundred of old, when are we going to come to a place, church, that is going to say, Father, I have failed. I am sorry. I am missed. Mark, help me. Maybe this is an eye opening for us to come into repentance. The storm we are facing is very, very, very painful. How much more can we handle? How much more can we take in? It is a storm that I don't know how long it's going to long in the air. All this on on the restaurant. Doctors are trying, scientists are trying, people are trying. What is happening in this world right now? And stand up proud, no money, 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 no I will pray. I said in Matthew, I said in Paul, I said in James, I said in they said, I will pray. And I'm saying, I can intercede by the Father. I will pray to the Father that the Father will send another comfort, a helper, a predicate to this family. To help this family renew and rebuild their strength and put their trust in the Lord. That is a promise. As if a love to what he around here is going to send somebody to this family to help us. So the other that is also pastor is also going to send them to you. Because the journey of death is very, very, very painful. In 2017, let me just page back. The Friday night, I lost a nephew. The Friday night. The Saturday morning, the very Saturday morning, I lost a brother. I threw a set of tears after in my court because I could not handle it. But he had to say, he made a promise, he's going to send the comforter, somebody to help me through this journey. And I'm glad that I could take his word personally to say, yeah, help my dear partner, so please help me. I can't let me be a mark me. And he helped me. Till today. And every time when I when I go back to realize it, what has happened, I say, yeah. If it was not for you, where would I be? Amen. If it was not for you, where would I be? A month later, a, a month and a half later, to follow a poor, what death would make up? Again, I have to face death. Again, I have to go through the same ways. The same journey. But you know what? If it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? You know why? He comforted me. He helped me. He, 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 he lingered on to me. He said, Son, don't worry. I'm with you on the journey. So is it today with the Spiderman family. He's there to comfort you. And he'll comfort, comfort you for as long, as long as as you praise and worship me. Don't go off this road. 
مولي لا كيما تشوف في الفاس ثاني يرافني باش تخلنا نعيوم لك قال لي اون كان كثير ستيل نس جيني ستي فوكس مارت سيكر دي از باي ذا كريس بيكوز ات ذا فوت اوف ذا كروس ات ويل اتس اول I said some time back that in this yard where we are now, we might put maybe another 500 people and fill this yard to capacity. But at the foot of the cross, there is room for us all. The Christ of our Lord is. I have realized I have realized, I've come to reality, to a point of reality, where I can say, Yera, your grace is sufficient. Your mercy is anew every morning. And all I can say is, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I want to give it over the very same joy of the Lord to this prayer me to say, Father, Auntie Sandra, take it and run with it. Because if it had not been for Jesus, where would you have been? Faithful in the church, faithful in serving, faithful in doing things with the family, faithful with the with, with friends and neighbors. It's because the grace of God carries you through. Amen. is Alvin Sakma. The hand of healing is all it matters. I laid now, 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 two and a half weeks flat in bed. Did not know what happened. Hand for COVID to say. And look, before I continue, hold on. Let me just remind you. There is a thing on the road now. But it's so wrong to have said a rapid COVID test. Don't do it. Hand dear landed lips. Because I was classified positive because of the wrong thing that I did. And when I went to landed lips, I was negative. Two have you got a clear? I didn't know what, what hit me. But I say, Yara, I bring you, I serve you. I've got work to do. You took me out of the operation. Take me out of this bed. And Yara, at me, I tried to do no very His grace will carry this family. His grace will carry you. It will carry us all through. We just need to be at the cross, baby, because that's what I left to the cross. In my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have not told you. There is blood for all the men. There is blood. My welcome of died as belonging. How you get to your destination when you have to go up and say, it's my turn now. I have to leave Mother Earth and hit the Heavenly Father. What do I say and do? Who comes up with it? There is man said to not forgive that is leaving Mother Earth. They don't even say sorry to the ones that they have wronged because there is no time. That's the take for the care of me. There's no time for repentance because we are losing it slowly but surely. If it had not been for Jesus, the unexpected storm has come. The prophet waves that come and waves that come and waves that come. I'll say me, Han, can to me. I'll straight I dear to and say, Believe me, you will come. Because they, they're afraid of our prayer lifestyle. When I was put an under the air, I saw this prophet here, he gives it, he grants it. And this morning, I have come to tell this family don't give up. Don't get weary. Stay the way you are. Be on your knees. Be focused. Tell the enemy he's a liar. Tell it to him. There is no secret what God can do. What is done for others, He can do for you. Like what Jim Reeves said, this world is not my home. We are just passing by. 
and I never were there. Have you made your reservation up there? And you all can say, Yera, the day I come home, will you welcome me into your presence? Will you hear the word that says, well done, that good and faithful servant. Or will you hear, pass from me, son of iniquity. What is this all about? Call us Mark on Sakrech Medira. Where there is hurt, let us show love. Let's rebound, rededicate our lifestyles to the Lord this morning. Cause pride in the earth. And they say for us in John 40, I hear you to be lost, to be beloved. And you can even steal from your dear, irritate the pride. And then when you come on the other side, you'll realize if it had not been for Jesus, where would I have been? He's a friend that speaks closer than a brother. Simple. He doesn't want nothing of your possessions. All he says, come unto me that I have related. And I, I, the Father, will give you rest. Exhale you inside. And this morning, on the tell Samantha, you'll be a father to the fatherless. You'll be a husband to the widow. It's where you step in. Sierra, I know he's with you. My trust that is with you. Help me grow up, my child. Because your word says you're the father to the fatherless. You're a helper to the widow. Because he's the author and the finisher of our fight. He knows our needs and he knows our desires. Speak your word, Lord. Touch this family. Give them inner peace. Don't leave them as orphans. Hold them, embrace them. The journey that they see in front of them, Lord. I pray this morning that you be with them. Carry them along this journey. Hold them in a palm of thy mighty hand. Bring peace, Lord. Bring peace. By your grace and by your mercy, Lord, that we cherish this book. You'll send the comfort as a mentor. You'll send the comfort of this book. You are. He's not a man that lies. His word is a and a man. His word is true. All you have to do is step out from your comfort zone and step into his pathway where he will bring you closer, closer like never before. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Oh, how I love him. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. I pray, Lord, that you take the family, build the heads around them, keep them in the palm of the hand. Hold them. Shape them. Renew them. And the joy of your strength be upon them. And I know that I know, Lord, the trust is placed in your mighty hand. You are the author 
and the finishing of our faith. Help us to where we are weak, make us strong. You said in Psalms 121, I look to the hills where comes my help. And this morning, Lord, every single one that stands and it is under the sound of my voice, oh, yeah. help comes from you. Help us through this journey, this painful journey that we are entering. To. Help us this morning, Lord. It's a cry of our heart this morning that you're coming out. We are caught up this morning, Father, but I know that I know that our prayers is not Touch every single one this morning. There has lost loved ones before. Wipe away the tears and send the comfort. Your promise is now and forever. I thank you and I praise you. As we journey, Lord, to the Brixton Tower, Father, I pray, give us safe and mercies. In your precious name, somebody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. For the word in season, amen. As I said at the beginning, his word is our strength that we can trust upon, amen. Uh, John 14, Pastor speaks about it. The Holy Spirit will come, our comforter. And he says the comforter will do two things. He will remind you of the words that Jesus has spoken. And he will teach you new things. So we need to, to be able to remind you of the word. You need to stay close to him. So he can remind you. How can somebody remind you? You are reminded today of Quran's life because he was close to you. Amen. And uh, the Holy Spirit will remind you if we get close to God. Close to him, he will remind you of the words, even today's word that was spoken, and he will give you strength during this time. Uh, we're gonna do the obituary now. Um, I'm gonna ask Dalla, he can come forward. Amen. Brother. Amen. Our Lord and Savior, our family. I'm gonna say friends because everyone's family here. Yeah? Ron Bradley Magnum, 44 years young, passed away peacefully on Monday, 12th of July, 2021. He was surrounded by his younger brother, myself, and his girlfriend, Samantha. Grant was born on the 31st of January, 1977. He was the fourth of six children of the late Glenn Magnum, and fourth of six children of Sandra Markman. Grant grew up in Rachel Park and was a very sporty young person. Sport became his, his life's passion. He achieved multiple accolades and records in athletes and obtained his provincial colors in high jump, 100 meters and 200 meters sprint. So, he was a grand He was a friend. Stock, 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 stock. During his career in participating in gala swimming events, he continued his continued passion for sports saw him play a pivotal role in establishing Rega Park's first cricket club. He served as the club's first captain and saw it progress in senior leagues so in Eastern Cricket Union. He was an avid Manchester United fan, vigorously supported the team and created healthy banter with friends who supported other clubs. Grant was also passionate about computers and gaming from a young age and would spend hours in front of arcade games striving to beat the machine. The passion ever wavered and allowed him to pursue a, a career in information technology. Grant's love for adventure and outdoors has never faded into his adult life. And he has always enjoyed being outdoors, especially 
where there's a body of water. And I'm all can grant likes for him. As you see, it's all that is yes, and then it comes last. I might see it too. He was, oft, he was often found spending hours in the water while the patient above are not exhausted. His patient and deep love for his family and friends always rose above all, all his other patients. Grant played a role of family, patriarch, often always opening his home to family and friends. Grant survived by, by his 11-year-old daughter, Shaylee, his mom, Sandra, and seven siblings. Oh, your memory loves on with us. Uh, rest in peace. We shall meet again, brother. Thanks, Alan. Amen. I jump. You must have courage to do chai. I jump. I have to sit on my angle grinder. Amen. We're gonna do the thanks, amen, and we're gonna ask uh, Chao Musa. She can come forward. Good day to all pastors present, bereaved family, especially Samantha and Sandra, my friends, please allow me to do the vote of thanks. First of all, the family would like to thank God for the 44 years that they could share with Grant. He was a pillar of strength to his family and all his friends. To Samantha and Sandra, and the rest of the family, we would like to say thank you, Samantha, Grant's partner, for loving Grant unconditionally and taking such good care of him. Sam, despite you also being sick, you have managed to make Grant's last days as comfortable as, humanly, as you humanly could. The family cannot thank you enough for this, as during this time on Sandra, Betty, Dylan, Zayden, Kami, they all struggled with COVID. And we pray that God will bless you and help you to heal in the time to come. During the, this most difficult time that the family is going through, saying thank you to family and friends who has done so much for us and on whom we could really rely and lean on for strength. Saying thank you seems so inadequate. COVID has taken humanity to a very cold and impersonal level. COVID has taught us, if we love our family and friends, we need to social distance. If we pray for one another, we cannot come together in prayer. We should rather send emojis of praying hands or short WhatsApp messages and prayers to one another. Yes, this is our new normal. To Pastor Wayne Balkistan and his leadership, we cannot thank you enough for your spiritual encouragement and support during this difficult time of our bereavement. May God bless you and keep you and increase your territory according to his will. In spite of our new normal, the family would like to extend their heartfelt thanks to a few individuals who has been there for Grant and the family, especially during this time of uh, of their isolation and quarantine. Grant had, Grant had a vast circle of friends, especially thank you to Adrian Franch, Eugene Duplessis, Yule Champion, Celestian Camp, and Vetti's big circle of friends, Kyle and Faith Magman. Thank you for going out of your way to help the family when they could not do anything themselves. We pray that God will bless you abundantly for your unselfish acts of kindness. To Kevin Kopan, the paramedic, thank you for your help in our trying time. May God give you the strength to continue to do the good work that you are doing in our community. 
to wait here. Thank you, my sister, for what you have done for Grant, despite your own sickness. You gave yourself so unselfishly and even managed to take Grant to the hospital, even though you were not well yourself. You are full of strength to your mom and the rest of the family. And we pray that God will bless you in every area of your life. To the doctors and nurses of Dalby Hospital, we don't know you by name, but thank you for being there in Grant's, Grant's last moments and making sure that he was comfortable and not alone when we had to leave this earth. May God strengthen you to continue to do the good work that you do. To all Grant's colleagues at BCX, thank you so much for the time he could spend with you and for the good working relationship he had with every one of you. May God prosper all your future endeavors. To all friends and family members, the family cannot thank you enough for all the prayers, your, your presence, messages of condolences, flowers and monetary contributions. Thank you for even the emojis and the elbow hugs. We really do appreciate. Lastly, thank you to Rand Funeral for making this most painful ex uh, experience more bearable. May God bless your business. Also, the family would like to thank Jenny for the meal she has prepared for us and also Pucky for the decor. To the family, God looked around his garden and found an empty space. He then looked down upon the earth and saw Grant's face. He put his arms around Grant and lifted him to rest. As there was no family around with the help of God's angels, he flew Grant to his heavenly place. Family, let's trust God in our healing. Once again, thank you all. Just a few announcements. Uh, they will be viewing on your way out and the family requests that you just form a uh, card of honor as the family leaves. And then also while the family is on the, going to the crematorium, they would like you to remain behind and enjoy a meal with them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. Uh, yes. John has mentioned that there will be a viewing for those that were not able to. And just the process for the crematorium will be 20 people are allowed there. Uh, the undertaker said that they do, those who want to go what can go, but can but will just have to stand outside. But inside, only 20 people allowed. And then obviously the back where the coffin goes before they cremate it, only five people are allowed. Amen? So... I'm going to ask maybe the last to play the songs and yes, we can just proceed as uh, children just requested. So you can have a view and then we'll have a card of honor for the family. Amen. Let's just pray first. <coughs> and just... <coughs> Father, we thank you, Lord God Almighty, for what you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, for the words that was spoken, the strength that you gave your people, Father God Almighty, to pay the tribute, Father God Almighty. We thank you for the life of grandfather, God Almighty, the impact that he has made. Lord, you have called us to be an influence, Father God. And I pray, Lord, that whatever uh, seed he has sown, Father God, into the lives of your people, that they will continue, Father God, with his legacy. In honoring him, Father God Almighty, we pray for your strength upon your people, Father God Almighty. Comfort them, Lord, Holy Spirit. Teach them even your ways, Father God Almighty. I pray, Lord. Father, that even as you pray, Lord, that your kingdom may come in their lives, even as it is in heaven this day, Father God Almighty. I pray, Lord, for your complete uh, protection, that your angels may camp around us, Father God Almighty, even as we travel, that you'll be with us, those that will be traveling, Father God Almighty. Give them strength. Lead them, Father God Almighty, in the name of Jesus. Grant favor on the road. Grant us favor, Lord, in the crematorium, Father God Almighty. We ask it, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Can proceed. <clears throat> Don't think for a moment I never felt the pain. You can't imagine. 
hands All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Oh, what peace we often forfeit Oh, what needless pain we bear All because we do not carry Everything to God in prayer Heavy trials and temptations Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged Take it to the Lord in prayer So faithful Who will all our sorrow share Jesus knows our every weakness Take it to the Lord in prayer Are we weak in heaven? Covered with the Lord of care Precious Savior, still our refuge Take it to the Lord in prayer Do your friends despise, forsake you Find a soul is there, and you will find a soul is there. Thank you, guys.
Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But now I'm found was blind But now I see Amazing grace How Sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but. My heart to fear in grace, my fears relieved. How precious, dear, that grace appeared.
blind man walked on the waters and he raised a cherished daughter. He fed the hungry, cleansed the leper, but we need Jesus now more than. Jesus now more than ever we are sailing in stormy weather all his children should get together for we need Jesus now more than ever he touched the land And he started walking He touched the dumb man And he started talking He put their lives on Back together But we need Jesus now More than ever Jesus now sailing in stormy rain all his children should get together or oh, we need Jesus now more than in the book of Revelation read about the Tribulation We are headed In that direction Only Jesus' blood can give protection Jesus now More than ever We are sailing In stormy waves All his children should get together For we need Jesus now more than Jesus now Jesus now More than ever More than ever We are sailing in stormy waves All his children Should get together For we need Jesus now More than ever For we need Yes we need Jesus now More than ever Oh 
among you and who are over you in the Lord and abolish you and to esteem them very highly with love in their work's sake and peace amongst themselves. Now we exalt you, brethren, warn those who are unluring comfort in faint heart and behold the weak and be patient with all. See that no one renders evil to evil to anyone, but also pursue what is good both for themselves. Rejoice. Pray always. Pray without season in everything give thanks. But I do not want you to be ignorant that concerning those that are called to be able to for we believe that Jesus died and rose again to God of the peace and God of the sheep. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we are all alive and now coming. And the Lord will by no means perceive who has sleep. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with the shout of loud voice of angels and the triumph of God, and the dead in Christ will rise. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you bow your heads as we pray this afternoon? Father, we say thank you, and we are so grateful for many of us that are standing on this side of the grave. And your grace has been extended towards us here this morning. We pray for this family, an extended family. That you will continue to come for them as we are about to lay the last remains to rest here today. 
Father, we pray that you would come and comfort us as you have done through the preaching of your word, the comfort of many that we were surrounded with. We pray now that the Holy Spirit will continue to do its work, continue to comfort us in this time of our bereavement. We pray this now in Jesus' name. And everyone say amen. 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 I'll read to you from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, where Paul is writing this beautiful, uh, melodious argument uh, dealing with death, and the resurrection. He says, uh, but some of you will say, because there are those that will argue, uh, how is it that the dead will be raised? And with what body do they come? Paul says those are foolish arguments because we believe that our faith is not in vain, that we will see grant again. And he says, what is sown will obviously die, but it will be resurrected again. He says that which is sown uh, is but just a grain, a seed, a wheat. But God give it a body as it pleased him. Then he says that not all is the same. He says not all flesh is the same. There's one kind of the beast, one kind of fishes, another the air. So are there different celestial bodies, one differ from the other in glory. Then there's one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another of the stars. Each one differ one from the other. Kijk naar die persoon gewoon langs jou en sê, ja, jy lijkt different as ek, maar het meen nie, jy is nie een sterretje. Because Paul says, we are all stars and we all differ one from another. He says, so is the resurrection. So here is Paul's argument. And so those that are standing here in Cassandra, there will be a resurrection. There will be, he says, so will be the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, but it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, but it will be raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, but it will be raised in power. And so as we commit Grand Margaman to his final resting place, we sow him in dishonor, he will be raised in honor. We sow in this world, but he will wake up in another world of glory. And so we say, Grand Opperman, you've run your race. Go and now go and rest in Jesus' name. Grant Magaman, my apologies. Go and rest, Grant Magaman, and we pray that the Lord will meet you on the other side. For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Hamagatle, Grant Magaman, as we bid you farewell in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to ask the family, please, to come and put a rose or a petal on the coffin as we're about to. Do the final commando here today. Are we lifting it up? Not necessary. So who does it? Yeah. Um, if the five family members are supposed to get the break, they get out. The rest of you, if you want to do the thing, uh, exit this door, there's another door on the right hand side, you can just stay the other side. Thank you. Uh, let's say a final prayer. Uh, we will close for us pray before the five leaves, and then we will meet one another at the house. Amen. Pastor Van, would you say a prayer for us? Thank you. Father, we thank you for the life of Grant. Lord, we, we, have, we cherish the time that we spend with you. We know that you know, Lord, is seated with you. As we come the last while, Father, we pray for the bereaved family again, that you just touch them, cover them, be with them. Now and forever, in Jesus' name, Amen.